I wish to remind you that you are vibration first and foremost. This means you need to pay attention to things beyond what you're seeing, touching, and feeling. We need to remind you that you're emitting a vibrational signal, to help you understand that the signal you're emitting is being responded to all the time. And that's what shapes your life experience the way it is. Most humans don't know this and often don't want to know it because they don't want to take responsibility for what's happening to them, especially the parts they don't like. You might say, I'm sure I'm not the creator of my reality. I wouldn't have created this. But when you realize you have creative control over your experience, because you have vibrational control over it and the ability to focus. The issue that life happens, that we keep living, good things happen, bad things, things we don't like, are contrasts or varieties. It's simply to have, as if, a buffet around us with lots of variety, lots of different things happening. It's by having contact with this variety that we get clearer about what we like and what we don't, so we can ask for more of what we like and create more of what we like more and more. So they were saying that we come to conclusions in our life about what we like and don't like, as we come into contact with variety. And then they said that we call this step one. Step one, in fact, is the moment of asking, the moment when you come into contact with something that generates a negative emotion. At that moment, you are emitting a request. This variety and contrast that surrounds you, makes you ask for what you want, whether you use words or not. You're simply coming to the conclusion of new preferences you have on the subject. You were born this way, you've always been this way. We want you to accept that it's like this. This is a good thing. Step one is a good thing. You're constantly asking. This is at the base of the expansion of the universe. It's something wonderful. We think that living anything we didn't want, any intercurrent event, any negative manifestation, or a negative emotion, means that we didn't apply the law of attraction correctly. It means that something bad is happening. They are saying no, folks. Step one has to happen. This is a good thing. It makes the universe better. We are contributing to the evolution of the universe, the world, in our own lives, and in the lives of other people, through our requests that we emanate in step one. You're asking, whether you're aware of it or not. That's step one. Step two is not your job, it's not your function. Step two is where the source, within you, and the law of attraction come in to respond to what you're asking for. When you emit a signal, that signal is answered. Whenever you ask, you are attended to. But, for you, what matters is that there seems to be a big distance in time between your request and being attended to. But there is no such distance in time between your request and the response. The distance in time is between your request and you aligning with the response, you entering the frequency of the response. Vibrationally, we are instantly attended to when we make a request. What we ask for becomes real in our vibrational reality, but we need to get to step three, which is the moment when we align with the response. So, we align with that request. Aligning with the request means feeling as if it has already been fulfilled, means getting in tune with it as if it were already happening. And this we may take a while to do, in general, we have this difficulty, because once we are in step one, when we are emitting the request, when we are there living, for example, a situation of scarcity, we get so involved in that that we continue asking and we have difficulty thinking that if I tune into the opposite of this, I will bring that opposite faster into my life, into my concrete reality, not into my vibrational reality. I need to tune into this, I need to get to step three, which is the place of permission. And that's what often takes us time, because we have difficulty getting out of step one. So, we keep the universe moving, expanding. If we stopped asking, there would come a time when everything would stagnate. There is no such distance in time between the request and the universe's response. The distance in time is between the request and us aligning with the response, entering the vibrational frequency of the response. 
It's something vibrational that you can't see, can't feel, or use. So, you can say all day that when you ask you are attended to. You need to align with what you're asking for. In other words, if you want more money because you don't have enough, when you feel afraid, worried, with financial problems, or just dissatisfied, when you feel that way, you are that way. That is, you become a person with more fear, dissatisfaction, and even more financial problems because you focus your attention on it. The more you activate this within you, the more it happens. It happens in a different way than you believe it happens, but you have observed it for so long that you don't know what came first. The mistake is not in saying that we think we have reason to be feeling the way we are, that we feel this way because, after all, look at everything that's happening. So, you need to stop feeling those things, and then your reality will change. What comes first is always your vibration, and the manifestation simply corresponds with what you are emanating. So, if you want more money, but feel that you don't have enough money, you can ask all day, every day, you can write lists, but if, in your stomach, in the center of your being, what you're feeling is fear or the absence of money, then you have a vibration going on that's different from the response you're seeking. You want more money, but your vibration says, I don't have enough, and the law of attraction responds by giving you more of what you're feeling, which is not having enough. So, many say, wow, but that way it doesn't seem like there's a way for me to succeed. How am I going to generate a feeling of something I'm not yet experiencing? Because if I'm feeling the lack of something I want and I'm conscious that I'm feeling that lack, and of course I feel it, since I want it but it's not here yet, then what do I do? You need to feel the sensation of already having it. Just try a little, try not to activate within you so frequently the vibration of what's not present and focus on activating the vibration of what you want. It's not as difficult as you think. So, step one is the contrast, it makes you ask. Step two is you are given this vibrationally. So, in fact, there is no distance between the request and the response. Step three is you need to convince yourself that this distance does not exist, you need to feel as if it already is so that it will be. And we know that many of you find this difficult, but many of you are practicing this and succeeding. Many of you are understanding the universe, finding a way to make yourself feel good without needing what you want to be there already. If you don't need the evidence of what you want to be there before feeling it, then you can feel the vibration of it before it has happened, which means it now has to happen. So, you ask in step 1, the source responds in step 2, you allow in step 3, but now, we've been talking to you for a while, you've been following us well, and we always say that if you don't try so hard, if you simply accept that your natural state is to be beings who feel good, and if you wake up in the morning and before you start thinking about the things you have to do that you don't want to, and before you start thinking about yesterday's injustices or 10 years ago, before you. Remember that you're going to work at that place you don't want to go to, before your children wake up, before any of those things happen that challenge your feelings of well-being, if you can find the feeling of well-being and stay in it for a little while, that's good. Use very general thoughts, because if you get specific, generally, it doesn't work as well. What are general thoughts? Things like, things work out for me, today is going to be a good day, I have help, I have good things in my life. And what would be specific thoughts? Things like, I am a millionaire, I am going to win the lottery, I am going to stop feeling pain. In the specific, we often affirm things that we still can't believe and end up activating the opposite of what we would like. But when we make more general well-being affirmations, it's easier to believe in them, and then we can more truly feel that sense of well-being. Enter an attitude of appreciation and stay in it for a little while. Take advantage of it. The law of attraction will help you, because the law of attraction says that like attracts like and provides this consistent life experience. So, to make this very clear, we want to speak very clearly, you have 17 seconds to sustain that thought and turn it into something more powerful. 
17 seconds and other thoughts like it join together and there's power in crossing the 17 second line, which most people are unaware of. If they knew about it, if they understood the importance of it, when they woke up, they would make sure to spend at least those 17 seconds feeling good. So, if you find a thought that makes you feel good, or better yet, if, when you wake up, you don't introduce a thought that makes you feel bad, because when you wake up, there is no thought. During the time you slept, you interrupted the momentum of thought. This is something important for you to understand. You don't realize it because as soon as you wake up, you start thinking and pick up the momentum again, you pick up where you left off the day before and start all over again. But when you sleep, the momentum of thought stops. Therefore, if you find a thought that makes you feel good, or better yet, if, when you wake up, you don't introduce a thought that makes you feel bad, because when you wake up, there is no thought for the time you slept. You interrupted the momentum of thought, that is, the buildup of thought. This is something important for you to understand, you don't realize it because, as soon as you wake up, you start thinking and pick up the momentum again. You pick up where it was the day before and start all over again. But, when you sleep, the momentum of thought stops, the law of attraction is suspended for you, your point of attraction is not active while you sleep. So, when you wake up, you have a great chance to get off on the right foot. This expression is yours, we don't like it very much, but we think you would understand. When you wake up, you have a great chance to get your vibration rolling in the direction you want it to go. You have a great chance to get your vibration moving in the direction you want. Your best opportunity to do this is as soon as you wake up, before you have any momentum going. So, we need to talk about this for a while. The point of all this is that, when you care about how you're feeling and you practice feeling good until you can do it more consistently, then you no longer feel the way you did before. You know, when you started learning about the law of attraction and began to avoid negative people, and then you started to realize that you were avoiding a lot of things. So, you simply can't isolate yourself from everything and everyone, and you would have to give up a lot of good things if you tried to isolate yourself. But you don't have to be a hermit to have alignment. You need to practice your alignment until you can be anywhere with anyone and maintain your vibration. You need to practice your alignment until you can be anywhere with anyone and maintain your vibration.